Welcome, everybody, to uh, Amsterdam PHP. Um, my presentation is about uh, mo money often costs too much. Um, maybe you're wondering who is, has invented this line. Well, it was Ralph Waldo Emerson who um, uh, said, said this uh, years ago. And he had a really philosoph uh, philosophical um, uh, thought about money. So why do we need money? Um, and I'm going to uh, present why you need it in your, uh, in your PHP application. So um, the agenda for my presentation is as follows. First, I'm doing a little bit, a little introduction about myself. Then I'm uh, asking myself, what is money? Then I'm asking, how can you use money inside your application? What is a value object? And finally, implementing money in your own application. So my name is Frederick Bosch. I'm writing PHP software since PHP 3, so that's quite a while. Um, I'm the owner of a company called Genko. We are creating software for associations in the Netherlands. And I'm, a, I'm owner and lead developer. Um, I got involved in open source software in 2013. I created my own little framework and uh, I found out with Git and Composer that I should really uh, should migrate my SVN uh, stuff towards Git like everybody else is familiar with, I guess, here. Um, and I found out with Composer that there are many packages that already did what I created. And I started replacing the stuff that I created myself and replace it with all kinds of open source libraries. And um, that helped myself to focus on the things that I uh, uh, need myself to focus on with my business, instead of writing a uh, complete framework. framework. Um, and that's how I also got involved into um, contributing to open source software. I um, needed, of course, to work uh, things in my uh, framework, in, my, in our uh, applications to work. I needed to do uh, uh, pull requests, start issues. And a, l a while ago, I thought, well, instead of uh, just doing little contributions, why should I not pick a library to actually uh, contribute a lot to it? Because I was really fond of um, the work of Matthias uh, Ferwas, is that how you pronounce his name? I guess so. Um, and I re read his blog, I saw the money uh, library on GitHub, many pull requests open, mon many issues, and I thought, well, maybe this is the project that I uh, can choose to, to contribute to and to have really like an impact on open source software development, um, like the open source software development has had an impact on me. So that's why I started doing pull requests in 2015. And together with Mark Sagi Gazar, I, uh, we uh, started a new uh, GitHub organization called Money PHP. And we are now uh, uh, looking forward to release version 3 of the Money uh, PHP package. Um, Money PHP has like more than 500,000 downloads uh, since Packages was invented and uh, or since Packages was counting it. And we have like almost 1,000 stars on GitHub. So 970. So when you go home, you, kn you know you have to press the button because we want the thousands. We want to hit the thousands in like as short time as possible. So that's enough on me. Um, what is money? I started to ask myself the question while I was preparing this talk. Can anybody here tell me what money is? What, what is money? Happiness. Happiness. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was not what uh, Emerson was meaning with, ha with, uh, with money, I guess. Anybody else? Yes, that's true. <laughs> that's actually what's called uh, a unit of account, according to Wikipedia. It's like a, 
nominal monetary unit of measure or currency used to value uh, goods or other things. But um, it's also a medium of exchange and it's uh, uh, a store of value or a standard of deferred payment. So money has really like a definition. And where is money? Well, I guess everybody here is a developer who does not, has ever uh, created an application where money was not involved. I think everybody while developing, yeah, you? <laughs> everybody while developing like a web shop or a ticketing system or a book booking.com, money is everywhere, everywhere inside your application. So how are you using money? Who is using just decimals or decimals, how you say it? And uh, like primitives in PHP to represent money, like a string, a float, or a double. Who's doing that? Oh, I don't believe you. I just <laughs> don't believe you. Yeah. And like, I think everybody is, has an application somewhere that is still doing this. Am I lying? Nope. Huh? <laughs> Who's using an integer? Okay, all right, that's already. Who is using money PHP here? Okay, so that's not too many. So hopefully, afterwards, after this talk, you will think about doing composer require Matthias, Matthias Veras slash money PHP. Any, anybody else has an own solution towards money? Yeah, you are? Can you tell us? Huh? Oh, you have, okay. <laughs> okay. Money Pearl. Money Pearl. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> money Pearl, yeah. Well, uh, money actually has many implementations because the original implementation was uh, uh, invented or the uh, definition of how to use money, like I'm going to present you, as, has been defined by uh, Martin Fowler and has had many uh, implementations. PHP is one of them. But you can find your own Ruby or uh, Python or like there are many implementations of the money pattern that I will talk about today. So if you're using another language, you can replace the things that you're seeing in PHP, replace it with the language that you are writing software in. So why is there actually a need for something else than like a floating point or a string or a double. Uh, why should you avoid at any time to use a float to represent your money? Well, I think this is actually the most important thing why you should never use a float to represent money. Because if you are comparing like what you learned as a kid to like add and subtract things, those things are not true while developing uh, uh, software. 8 minus 6.4 in my world is 1.6. But if you do uh, uh, equation on this, it will return false if you compare it with, uh, with y. So is, does anybody get this? That uh, because of floating uh, point, because of precision um, of your computer, that you cannot compare like x and uh, uh, y with each other because they will only become true when you uh, convert them to strings. So if you have like a application that do this is doing a comparison on two floating points, you will get really weird uh, results. There you cannot pass any test with this. But there's more. How are you, when you're using just a regular uh, a double uh, I integer or a string, how are you rounding? Suppose you have three investors owning uh, 33 uh, each. They receive 500. How would you round that? Because, <laughs> because if, you, if you start rounding, if you only use round or uh, then you might lose money because if you have 500, you cannot divide that by three. And, huh? Or make money. Or make money. You can lose or make money. 
So um, then it's gone. <laughs> and you don't want your money to be gone. Because if you're uh, running a web shop where uh, you have prices, then you don't want to lose or to do a wrong calculation on your money, uh, on amounts. But there are other things, other concerns, why you should not use strings or floats to represent money. How do you model multi-currency applications? Are there any, is there anybody here who's modeling multi-currency applications? Then, then you all know that like only like a float or a string will really give you into trouble when you start to convert uh, an amount to another currency's amount. But also, we all know that it's really um, Hand, it's really a handful if you can express <coughs> that a variable is having a, a money, is, is representing money. Because like, like, like I said before, money is like not the same thing as a, uh, just a decimal number, a numeric value. It's something else. It has an own definition that's completely different from a numeric value. You want to uh, express that in your application, right? Like you create your own objects for things to express what you mean with that object. It's the same with money. If you use just a regular primitive value of PHP, then you're not expressing money in your application. Also, how to deal with large amounts. We all know that PHP has a integer maximum or an integer minimum. minimum. How do you deal with that? Suppose you're um, having an application where you accept bitcoins as a currency. And you maybe you know that bitcoins has a subunit of eight. So how would you express really large amounts of money um, when you're using a primitive like a string or a float or a double in PHP? And the final question is how do you display or how do you print money um, in your application. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Printing. 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 You mean I, I must use echo? <laughs> Printing money would be. So, and this is what I learned while I was uh, switching. Um, like I said, in 2013, I read really lots of things, and I encourage you to do the same. Um, I read uh, uh, Matthias Ferris's blog a lot, and he was talking on value objects. And I'm, I learned why value objects are really valuable to use inside your application. Hopefully, after today, if you're not using value objects a lot, and I hopefully after today you will know that you have to use them a lot inside your application. And I'm going to, um, uh, hopefully, I'm going to convince you to do that. So what is a value object? Value object is a, just a regular class in PHP whose equality is not based on identity. Now, that, that has a uh, definition, and the definition is given by Wikipedia. Two value objects are equal when they have the same value, not necessarily being the same object. So we all know that if we have an, uh, an object in PHP, which has a uh, property called ID, then, uh, and it's coming from a database, and you compare it with another object that has a different ID, then those things are really different in your application. They're not the same thing in your application. Whereas with value objects, there is no such thing as an ID. The object is not carrying ID. It's the value of the object that is um, uh, telling you um, uh, what, what the value object is. Who, who has five euros here? Does anybody has five euros here with, with them? No, sorry. Anybody has five euros here? Yeah, you do? Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to exchange you, exchange it with my five euros. You don't care. <laughs> you, you don't care that you got my five euros. I don't care that I got yours. Because there is only a number that's valuable for the bank. Th that's your, like a number. There's a number on this, on this bill that's 
a number that's only valuable to a bank. For you, inside your application, you don't care if it's my five euros or your five euros. The, 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 uh, the things are equal. Does everybody, anybody get what I mean? Yeah. Another uh, point that's, that's important with value objects is immutability. And that means an object cannot be modified after creation. So the state of the object remains the same after it has been created. Does anybody have a question on that? Maybe, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, come back after the talk. Um, let me demonstrate you why immutability is important. And wh while doing so, I'm going to um, show you something about a built-in object in PHP. It's called daytime. I think many people are using it. Maybe someone else is using carbon, which extends to daytime. And this um, demonstrates you why, because daytime is mutable, not immutable, the opposite. If you create an object of daytime now, and today is the 18th of August 2016, and you're sort of going to calculate yesterday, so you're going to put the today value inside the yesterday object, and you're going to sub subtract one day of the daytime object, and you're going to return it. That now, if you format uh, yesterday, it will give the day of yesterday. Ooh. And it's gone. Oh, and it's gone. <laughs> there we are again. But now, you can see that today has also been, uh, has also subtracted one uh, day. So your value of today is modified while you might not have been aware of it while running your application. Does anybody have a question on this? So how are things different when you're using an immutable object? So that's why, because in PHP they, there were people that said, well, daytime should be a value object, it should be immutable. So PHP already invented daytime, so they thought, okay, now we're going to invent daytime immutable too. So now we're going to uh, use the same function again. So now we're going to calculate uh, yesterday again while using a daytime immutable object. So now you see, when you uh, call the function yesterday on the on this second line, and you format it afterwards, then yesterday is giving you the real value of yesterday, but today was not modified. So daytime, daytime immutable now will always represent the, the value of now. N they will, it will never change during your application. And that's really useful to prevent things like uh, I've shown you on the, on the previous slide. Now it's time to show you the money, because how are we, uh, how um, uh, is a value object implemented uh, with money, the money package? So the same things apply like I told you before. The important one, the first thing was equality. So I have one amount, 100 uh, currency euros, you can also use static, uh, uh, static uh, named constructors. Oh, I should have removed new, by the way. <laughs> it's stupid. Um, but you see that mo amount one equals amount two. So those are different objects, amount one and amount two. But if you ask them if they are equal to each other, they are, because I can exchange my five euros with yours. It, your application doesn't care if it's w what kind of 100 euros it is. If someone is ordering uh, a product of 100 euros, then you'll find that it's 100 euros. You don't care which ID is on the bill. So um, does anybody, everybody get that? Yes. Does, it ha have a, does anyone have a question on that? So then, immutability. So 
the money value object, you can do your money calculations with it. So if we have, like again, like 100 of euro, and we're going to add 100 euro, then amount 1 will be still be 100, because amount 1 cannot be modified. It rather returns a new value object. So when you call add on the object, it re will return a new object representing the new value. So that's what you see with amount 2. If you add, uh, again, something to amount w 1, then amount 2, because so you have to uh, you, you have to catch that, that, that add the return value, and you, you see that amount 2 is 200, and amount 3, of course, you can also subtract, will be 50. So amount 1 has been created with 100 and cannot be modified afterwards. It will always be 100. So this all also um, solves the uh, floating point uh, mystery that I was telling you before. We are using um, integers internally inside the money object. So like 8 euros is represented as 800. So you have to use the lowest possible denominator to enter into your value object. So in the case of euro, 800 means 8 euros. So if you s uh, uh, subtract uh, 160, then you will actually get, uh, I should have changed that to instead of add, it should have been sub, but right. Um, then you can, you can see that you don't have the problem again that, we, that you were uh, seeing on the previous slides. Then the other problem that I was telling you about before, it's like uh, the uh, problem with the investors. So you have like uh, 500 that you want to divide over three investors, each having an equal share. Then you see how the results are. So you can use allocate inside the money object, and it will um, make sure that you will not lose any money. Because you, it's going to pick the final one to add the other values to, that uh, in order to make sure you have like the same amount of 500. So no money will be lost when using the money, a money object. Then the other uh, problem that I was talking about, like exchanging currencies. I saw some people here um, doing currency exchanges. How are you doing this? Are you using money for this or are you using something like it? Something like it. You created your own, yeah. right? Um, well, if you use money, you can create a currency pair. Currency pair is also an object that's inside the money PHP library. And you can instantiate it with two currencies and a conversion rate. Or you can use the ISO uh, 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 no notation in order to, uh, create your, um, to create your currency pair. Does anybody get what a uh, what named constructors are? Does anybody does not know what that is? Should I explain that, or is that everybody aware of what a named constructor is? Okay, all right. So when you convert then 100 euros, you can use the per currency pair to convert it to actually get uh, uh, 125 dollars in this case. So. Money has also built in these kind of uh, uh, currency uh, conversion things. Finally, um, you, are, uh, you can use money to represent your amounts. So with the new uh, version 3 coming up of Money PHP, we now build in formatters and parsers. So you can actually use uh, the e internationalization li uh, library of PHP. Does anybody, everybody know what the ENTL uh, extension is of PHP? Who is using e ENTL here? I don't see it's like everybody. Someone needs an explanation on what ENTL is. ENTL helps you on 
all kinds of internationalization uh, things. It can translate things for you. It can format your number. It can um, it can do something with calendars and uh, stuff like that. Um, it's really uh, useful uh, to have a look at the ENTL page on the PHP website because there are many uh, helpful classes that can help you uh, better to better internationalize your own application. Um, here we are using it to format a money value. So um, in this case, I have like 500 of US dollars, and 500 in this case means five dollars. So when I instantiate the, uh, all the, uh, the objects that are needed to format, so you, you also see that you need a currencies object. Currencies object define um, the subunits that are used for a uh, currency. So with US dollars, that's like a subunit of two. With a euro, that's a subunit of two. So it's like two cents, so it's you can have cents. And with Bitcoin, Bitcoin has a subunit of eight. And there are all ISO currencies are implemented inside the ISO currencies uh, object. So if you are, um, if you want to uh, support all ISO currencies in your application, then it's a good idea to use the ISO currencies uh, object. And you can call the money format a format uh, uh, method in order to format your amount. But it's also possible to implement the interfaces that we created. So you saw on the previous slide that I used the ISO currencies uh, object. ISO currencies object is actually implementing an interface called currencies. You can also create your own uh, uh, implementation of, a of the currencies interface. Who here is uh, developing uh, applications where people have invented their own currencies? Elephant currency, something like that, yeah. Well, today I had a meeting, um, uh, something like a voucher that uh, in, a web uh, in a web shop that was represented as a currency. So you could have a, a own invented currency inside your account and that you could use that to order things inside that web shop. So in that case, it would be really valuable for me to implement an own currency uh, w with the uh, currencies interface. So suppose uh, we would implement the Dutch currency, Dutch guilder currencies. It would so look like something like similar like this. Don't think I do not use new lines, but I use this in order to make sure that you wouldn't wouldn't be have we wouldn't be there. Um, so um, here you see that um, the Dutch guilder has a has a subunit of two. Um, you can return an array iterator that, uh, in order to loop over your uh, currencies. And if you want to know if the a specific currency is inside this currencies implementation, um, you can use uh, this. Yeah, something else that I want to talk about is composition over inheritance. Um, Suppose you want to use the ISO currencies together with your own currency. That's why we invented the aggregate currencies object. And what people are used to do, and I, when I see some other packages, what I still see people doing is like people are extending all the time other objects. And then you will have like a real large, real big inheritance three of objects inheriting other objects, inheriting other objects, inheriting other objects. What I rather do is creating an object, make it final, so that uh, inheriting will be impossible, and you have to use composition in order to achieve what you want. Maybe, that's, maybe um, that needs some more explanation, because the aggregate currencies is also implementing currencies. The, the currencies interface. Does, does everybody get what I'm saying, or do I need to explain more? You get it? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's all right, that's fine. Um, so <laughs> the aggregate currencies expects an array of other currencies objects in order to support multiple 
um, yeah, like repositories of currencies. What I finally want to talk about is value objects that they are everywhere, but sometimes you don't see them. And this is a function that I picked from my own application that I was working on last week. And I was not seeing that I was not using a value object until someone else had a look at my code and said, wow, you're missing a point here. And um, what I will explain you what the business case is. I have a ticketing system. And with a ticketing system, people can come in. And people are checked in when they are coming in. And they are checked out when they're leaving. So I have a scanned at and a left at property on my ticket object. And that can be a daytime immutable uh, object. But people can forget to check in, or they can forget to check out. So this property can still be initi un not initialized. <laughs> um, so what I was doing um, before, I was doing like, if uh, scan at is nil or left at is nil, I'm returning nil. And otherwise, I'm returning returning. That is one return too much. I'm returning a period of how long somebody was at the actual event. But then I saw my test going wrong when I called the function ticket state four to interval in minutes because the person, the test that I was running was the person was not checked in. It was only checked out because he was forgetting to check in when he came in. So I got an error exception trying to get a property of a non-object. Everybody knows what that means. That means that you have to uh, do something about your code because uh, it contains bugs. So I was thinking about, well, how should I solve it? Should I put a try catch around this, this line and catch the error exception? That's PHP 7, by the way, that's doing that. Because in usual PHP, it would be a warning or something like that. But then I thought, well, I think I should never actually catch a error exception because this uh, the error is not in this line the error is in the line above because I'm returning multiple things I'm returning a period or I'm returning nil so I'm returning uh, mixed things and I asked my colleague and he said I'd ask him how would you solve this because I'm in doubt what I should do and he told me well I think you're missing the point because you're not seeing that you should use a value object here. So what is the value object then? The value object is presence. And the value object is when somebody, I should invent a new object that is representing the fact that somebody can, was never there or someone was there all the time or someone was coming in only and someone was leaving. Um, and when you uh, invent a new object for this, then everything becomes much more clear because when you're um, using this line then, then <coughs> state four returns a presence object. I can leave to interval because a presence object already knows uh, in minutes how long someone was there. And for someone that was never there in minutes is zero. Someone that was there f with a period that is like the minutes or seconds that someone was there. And so coming in and so leaving is also zero in my case. Um, so that because I used another object, <coughs> it was a value object, it can also be a moment object. Or um, suppose you're using a daytime uh, object to actually daytime immutable object to actually say <coughs> this is the actual time that I was there but suppose you have an application where you don't know when someone was in a certain place you can invent like a moment object that ha can have an exact time or can have like an unknown time but I know it was there was a moment and this is like there was a presence I know the person was there or was never there and then you can. Sorry, like I can see um, sort of why you would want this scenario where you can have, you know, um, different static methods in your presence object. 
But can you explain to me what's wrong with having a period that if that you just pass these two arguments to, and if they're null, then the period becomes zero? Um, well, so you're actually saying that, well, okay, well, well look, a period is, is a period is like, is an object that uh, it has a beginning and an end. So, um, uh, in, in my application, I wanted to uh, know the actual amount of time that someone was there. So, um, um, there are multiple um, uh, ways that I want to handle that. So it can be f w from a period, but it can also be something else. So it's more of a domain issue where you want to use an extra object. Exactly, yeah, yeah because the, the domain is asking me to, to do that. And when I created this presence object, later on while developing and adding features, I was not having a problem anymore because I was because I created this object that was required by the domain, I could add methods to that that belongs to a pres to, to presence rather than a period. A period is, is telling me it's like something with a beginning and an end. Well, presence doesn't necessarily mean it has a beginning and an end. It has, it, you were there. And uh, that, uh, Maybe in another application, you, won't, you will never need this presence object because your domain is not requiring it. Initially, the client said to me, well, I don't care. I only want to know the, the minutes of a person that was uh, checking in and checking out. Everybody's checking in, everybody's checking out. Nobody's forgetting that. Well, the client was wrong. He asked me to implement, yeah, well, in this case, it was like doctors. So, uh, well, the doctors that were uh, checking out at a certain amount of time, I want to know for sure that they also get their, in this case, accreditation points. So, um, uh, a period object was not enough for me. I had to, I had to use another uh, uh, value object to represent my domain issue. I think there's an even better explanation. Period is a generic concept of something that starts and ends. Uh, so you could use something like carbon that also offers a period. So in this case, it's outside of your domain. Exactly. And um, ex that, that's, that was really helpful. Did any, everybody heard that? Or you, this uh, has to be repeated? <laughs> Can you repeat it? <laughs> 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 um, so um, there, there might be, um, uh, in another domain, it, uh, you were, there will be other requirements to uh, create other value objects. If you had a look on into my uh, in the to the money object, the money object is a uh, is composed by two things, like the amount, like the numeric value of the uh, amount, and the currency. The currency is also a value object. A, it's, I don't care if there are many objects that are called euro or USD for dollars; um, they are the same. Um, so, it's the same here with the presence object. The presence object can be composed by multiple other objects. So, a, the, the most uh, used uh, example for value objects is something like an email address. So, you can create your own value object called email address or an address. But uh, an email address only receives a string as a uh, parameter in the only an ar uh, the string as an argument in the constructor while it is not necessarily uh, true that um, you only need one argument you saw that with with money um, that accepts two arguments the amount and the currency presence has accepts multiple methods so I'm about to be to finish the presentation um, are there any questions on the money, uh, how I, I'm solving money in my applications? And I like to um, create discussion maybe on uh, the questions you have. Yeah, you had a question. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, how would you deal with the case, uh, for example, if you would uh, write an application for a gas station? A gas station? Yeah, you would actually, uh, here in the Netherlands, for example, you would actually deal with a uh, three sub, uh, three 
it's out of queue, right? Yes. Especially for the price. Yes. So uh, is it possible, to, uh, would you extend the, the I would I would create my own currency, like I did with the um, Dutch guilder, mm -hmm. and instead I would create just like a uh, gas station euro, something like that, mm -hmm. and it would have instead of the regular two subunits, it would have three subunits, yeah. so like for three decimals. Um, well, um, that might be difficult. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I would actually invent something like a, my own currency code also mm -hmm. to represent the uh, uh, euro with three subunits. Mm -hmm. And then you can use, like he's saying, you can use the conver uh, conversion rate for that. I would do something similar to like th to that. More questions? Yes. How would you marshal your uh, money objects to a database or whatever? Well, um, I know that um, uh, there is like a package a uh, for uh, doctrine. There is you can just require a package and use it. If you're using something like um, uh, eloquent for Laravel, then it's more difficult. Because Laravel is not does not have uh, eloquent like with its uh, active record pattern, it's not possible, as far as I know, to insert an object into your database that has like that consists of multiple properties. So in this case, you want to insert into your database the amount and the currency together, in in the same uh, in in two separate columns in order to have like uh, comparison methods with your database on the amount, if you need that. Um, it's, it's, it's difficult to use active records. It's great, it, it will be great uh, when you use Doctrine or another uh, data mapper pattern, but I would advise anybody here to use a data mapper pattern anyway, but that's my uh, own personal uh, belief. Anybody else? Yes? How do you uh, handle uh, calculations with other value objects, like percentages, uh, things like that? Yeah. Um, if I go back to like add and sub, there is also multiply and uh, divide and other things like that. Absolute is also a, a method on the money object. I can go back. So here you see like the allocate method. And here the add and the sub method. There are also like multiply, divide, absolute, and there are, there are all kinds of methods that help you do your calculations with money. Do yeah. I don't know from the top of my head, but I think it's a. I think it accepts a float. Yeah. Yeah. Why is that the last person? I don't know. Yeah. I know what you mean. Um, in this case, um, we uh, the decision was to um, uh, add it to the last. Uh, so let's go back to the allocate method. So in. In the uh, in the money object, it was the de de uh, defined that the um, final shares goes to the last uh, of the uh, allocation. Uh, so so to the uh, share three and share two, not to share one. Um, there was no one. There's no one that has done a pull request to uh, to change it. So of course we can create an allocate. Uh, method with another parameter that says reverse true or allocate reverse. We can create a new method. And that's 
What, what's so useful on a value object? You can add a method to the value object because there is something in your domain that's requiring the method to be on this value object. Same with the presence and, and stuff like that. If you invent an object for something, you have reason to uh, add features to that object instead to the, the objects you're already dealing with. More questions? Yes. Yeah. I think it would be more reasonable to say the intent is 500, but it's understand that you're creating yeah. something to find intent. Yeah, um, I understand what you mean. Um, we are now in the uh, phase of releasing um, Money 3, 3.0. Um, 3.1 will contain something that's called precise money. Because of the problem that I showed you before with floats, you need additional libraries like BC Math and or GMP to do calculations based on uh, decimals. And in order to avoid these things now, we decided to use integers inside the money object. Yes, I can see that, but I think it's a good decision for that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I understand that, but... Um, the logic breaks when you go to Japanese VMs. Yeah. Like, completely, they don't have sense. They don't understand. They don't understand. Well, then it makes even more sense to use the Jinx and Yeah. Um, because uh, what now I have to understand for every possible currency, how many... Uh, what so input I have to give for... So, for y in the yeah. situation of yen, he knows it's 500 yen, but if you do some with euros, it's not 500 euros, it's 500 euro cents. Yes. It's a totally different thing. So it's very, it's very as he says, as a, as a code reviewer, you're sitting there and you actually get, you can easily get confused or forget yeah. that you, you have to multiply it by 100. Well, and what if you have a half cent uh, option? <laughs> no, okay, look, that, that's, I, I understand, I understand why this is confusing. Um, totally. And um, so, in order to solve it, you, you understand that in order to solve it, you need additional libraries like BC Math or GMP um, to do uh, precise calculations with floats, right? So, huh? So, um, well, that's why we uh, uh, created this uh, currencies uh, interface in order to return the subunit. So, the with a money object, you are always using the lowest possible denominator. So with dollars, that's two. With euros, that's also two. If you have an application where you have the lowest denominator, like for instance a gas station, you can create your own currency that has a subunit of three. So as a code reviewer, you should review in mind that the currency, the, the amount you're seeing is the lowest possible denominator with respect to the currency that you're seeing. But what if you don't see the currency because it is stored in a variable? You just see 500 no, some currency? No, that's not possible. With a money object, always carries a currency. So if you stored in a variable, uh, now you see on the screen that it's US dollar, but if that would come from a, from a database, you have no yeah. idea what the currency would be 500 or something. And it could be 500 cents. Yeah, I, I, underst I understand that it's confusing. Um, Actually, what we're missing here is that pens are also money. Well, money is a generic name for money. Well, fusion is the equivalent to money. Yeah, I, I understand what you're meaning. Uh, this uh, seems like a good 
<laughs> yeah, finally, I, I, I had on my presentation, I had a list of, oh, uh, ooh, of inspiration. I encourage you to have a look at this website or to follow these Twitter handles. I like them a lot to uh, have their opinion or their uh, uh, knowledge to gather that, and I use it a lot to uh, extend my knowledge of PHP and to improve my skills. I encourage you to follow them, and hopefully they, it will improve your skills as much <laughs> at, as it did my, to me. Thank you very much. <laughs>